everyone. This is not a talk about blockchain, first of all. This is also not a talk about decentralization, at least not technically speaking. This is a talk about the challenges when humans interact with technology. Now, I myself, uh, I've been working on a lot of different projects over the last years, and also since I have a very strong interest in how WeShare has developed its organization in a decentralized way, I'd really like to share some experiences on the challenge I faced in trying to implement new tech tools in an organization full of people. Now, of course, the topic of human interacting with technology is one that people have been thinking about for many years, but there's many things that I'm really faced with on an everyday basis. And I've really noticed that I think that leaders of today and teams that want to work in a distributed manner, they need to be able to navigate the discrepancy between how people imagine a tech tool when it's created and how people actually use it in real life. Because even if tech advances quickly, we won't be able to reap the benefits from that if people don't actually aren't ready to use them. So, as I said in WeShare, um, we think about these things a lot because we're a very uh, tech, uh, like, uh, tech-affine uh, community. We really like technology. We're also distributed across the world. And so it's been one of our core missions to implement new forms of decentralized governance and really try to reinvent the way we work. So some of the things we've done, we've really tried a lot. Um, we have, for instance, Trello. It's a project management tool. Uh, we use Lumio for collaborative decision-making. We also uh, use Slack for team coordination and communication, which I think many of you know. And we've also tried all kinds of methodologies for new forms of value distribution, for instance, value accounting. Now, while all of these different types of tools have brought in interesting insights on the coordination between online and offline activities, today I'd actually like to talk to you about a concrete experiment that we did recently with the WeShareFest team and an organization called Backfeed. So Backfeed is actually an organization that wants to enable teams and networks to scale in an equal and fair way. So they've developed a protocol that integrates into existing tools that enables people to evaluate each other's activities without centralized coordination. Now, this, um, this is a quite interesting tool that caught our attention because there are many different things that they were doing that we also thought uh, would fit into to the challenge that we've been facing. And so even though the experiment that we actually ran for this WeShareFest was quite short, it was quite surprising that there were a lot of really interesting challenges that really crystallized clearly out of this very short experiment. And so some of these challenges I'd like to share with you. Um, first of all, high barriers to entry, limiting openness. So openness is not necessarily the, something that all organizations care about. But in WeShare, it's been a priority for us to uh, have a network where contributors can easily get involved, um, access it, and really start contributing. And so we've been looking for ways to make this more easy for people to get involved. And when I saw Backfeed, I thought this could be interesting. Because actually, the way um, Backfeed designed their tool was that they would move to blockchain at some point, um, they weren't yet, which would then make the system technically completely open, which would make it easy for contributors to get involved, even though, for instance, we don't know at all who they are. Now, as I said, Backfeed is very new, and so we were actually some of the first beta testers ever, and so it wasn't actually on blockchain yet, and so therefore this technological openness didn't exist. But what was actually interesting is that it wasn't the tech openness that was the challenge, but a completely different aspect. So the moment I actually saw the tool for the first time, I realized there's no way I'm going to give this to my team and they're just going to know, oh, okay, this is how it works and it's really easy and they just start using it. It was clear that I would need to do a lot of training and face-to-face um, -face interactions to really show people this is how it works, this is how you can install it and really get going. So actually for our first experiment, we decided to limit it to only a very small group of people. Um, in the end it was 10 who uh, agreed to join the experiment who really got set up with the tool and the tutorials. 
So actually, the, the original idea was that many people could join and that we could actually distribute decision-making, but in the end, it ended up actually being very closed. All of this to say that you really need to take into account the transaction costs of onboarding people and teaching them how something works. And so even if it's technically open, that doesn't mean it really is that open and that there's actually a high barrier to entry. Um, and so here, actually, you can just see uh, one of my many Lumio posts explaining how the backfeed experiment worked to try to get people on board. Now, another important aspect uh, that we've really been working on um, in WeShare is trying to um, make contributions more visible. So ever since the beginning, WeShare has been built on a lot of volunteer work, and uh, the first WeShare Fest was completely bootstrapped. Today, many people also that get involved join as volunteers. And so we've always had a very blurry line between different types of paid and unpaid work. And often they run in parallel. So we've been looking for ways to make contributions more visible and reward people that are doing volunteer work. And so it seemed really interesting. Backfeed has the system where people can submit their contributions for different work items that they completed, and then they can get reputation for that through evaluations. And this reputation can grow over time, and then enable them to have more influence in the network. So this seemed like a really great idea, but at the same time, I realized that often, actually, the notion of volunteer work can be quite contradictory to this kind of quantification. Because the drawback of creating this visibility of actions is that you actually have to quantify, you have to measure, you have to track. And many people really don't like that. They don't want all of their actions to be tracked, and they don't want to reduce to a number the value they're bringing. And so that's something we've had a lot of discussions about also in our group, that we don't want to actually uh, maybe reduce the value of these contributions by having to measure them. Um, and here, just for, to, to see, this is actually a screenshot, it's not so visible, um, of the tool. So actually, this is the Slack integration, which is no longer being developed, but here you can see what it looks like when people submit contributions. And that actually brings me to the next uh, big challenge that we faced. So documentation. Um, I must say, in WeShare, we're pretty bad at documentation. Um, it has different reasons, also because we don't prioritize it enough and we don't have enough funds to um, incentivize people to really do it. But so, since we really wanted to be transparent, I thought, wow, this is great. Backfeed will enable automatically to track these contributions. We'll have it all documented right away. Um, because this will just be uh, where people will do their work. But the reality was actually quite different. Um, so on the one hand, people don't really have time to go on their computer and submit these contributions. And then there's the issue of the coordination between online and offline activities. Because often these tools are designed as if there just is no offline work. And so someone who, for instance, is uh, cleaning the office or bringing chocolate to the team, do you, can you really expect that person to then go to their computer and then put in the contribution? Seemed a little odd to me. So that's a real tension. And then in addition, there's the challenge of actually integrating these activities into the workflow so they don't get lost. And so I actually spent a lot of time thinking about how can I integrate this tool in a way that people don't have to use extra time and can just fluidly continue the way they usually do, um, just adding an extra layer of this tool. So um, I can, I, we created a, an integration with our project management tool so that automatically when people submitted a work activity or said that they did something, it would, it would be submitted to Backfeed. And so this seemed really great because suddenly contributions were happening and it was all going automatically. But at the same time, I realized there's actually quite a moral issue there because before people weren't actually consenting to making these contributions, and now it was just happening without them even having been asked. So there's a lot of questions around how much friction do we want to enable um, that also lets people to make choices, and how seamless should it really be, which then often makes it easier and more efficient, because many people are really worried about the time. And so uh, here's also just a quote of one of the team members, that brings me to really one of the most critical points uh, of this whole experiment. And that is that people are simply not rational, and they behave in very different ways than you expect, and they all behave differently. 
So the whole reason that we actually really wanted to start this experiment was to distribute the way value is measured and uh, yeah, to distribute how people also make decisions. And so we wanted decisions not to only be made by one person or one entity, but by a collective. But when we asked people to make contributions and evaluate, they really didn't want to. So there are two main roadblocks that we ran into there. On the one hand, people were really afraid of making contributions because they were often very perfectionistic. They wanted to wait till it was perfect what they did before submitting it. And other people were very afraid of being judged by other team members. Then in addition, people were also very, very reluctant to evaluate other team members because they wanted to have a consensus on what the criteria are of evaluation, and they didn't feel comfortable just giving some number and saying, OK, I think that's about what it's worth. They just they didn't want to take that responsibility. So I realized there was this real refusal to evaluate, which actually blocked the whole process and didn't enable us to, to continue using the tool. And there were also questions like cultural aspects, since we had a very international group. Some people had very different ways of uh, seeing the importance of evaluation and also criteria. And so this all brought me to one really interesting insight, which is that when we're trying to distribute these types of decisions and evaluation, we need to remember that just if we add this tool, the process of having to evaluate something doesn't become less painful than it is. Anyone here who's ever had to set a salary uh, for employees or people in the team knows that it's really, really hard because you have to make a judgment and it's just not really something that anyone actually enjoys doing so much. But we somehow have to do it, at least in the current system that we're in. And so I think that we need to realize that we, we can't really take the, the pain out of this, but need to invest a lot of time and energy and also need to be quite self-reflected in making these kind of decisions. And at the moment, from what I could see, not everyone is actually ready to do that. So what are my conclusions from this? On the one hand, as I said, I think many of these ideas of these tech tools are great. And if you talk to any of my team members, I'm the first one who's always very enthusiastic and excited about the next thing and what it's going to enable us to do. But I think it's really important uh, that we take into account the invisible work there is in onboarding people, teaching them how to use things, but more importantly, the behavior change that's actually necessary um, to be able to really benefit from the ideas that these new tools often actually hold. Because when I look at all my team members, and also especially myself, I'm often quite surprised by how centralized my thinking still is and actually by how much we still follow these traditional patterns because, of course, we were in them our whole life and maybe that's how we were educated. So I think that leaders of today and all teams need to be really aware how patient we need to be and how far actually the past still is to really changing the way we work and uh, how a distributed team can function. Because just because we have the tools doesn't mean it just happens automatically. So, as I said, I noticed it for myself. Um, I think you should all, I'd like to ask you all, uh, how centralized do you think your thinking is? Thank you.